I don't see your oh there's the record button. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this episode of Three Black Fat Grants. We are coming to you live from Cancun, Mexico. Cheers. Well, hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Greg Clayton. I'm one of the three black grad guys. We all graduated from Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York in the Fine Art Photography Program. We have decades of in, in, uh, experience in the professional photography realm. But we do it, I would say, primarily because we love it. Now, my topic today, oh, let me introduce my friends. Here's Ken Nelson in the black shirt and Mr. Mark Skinner in the gray. And uh, what a clean fight today. I want a clean fight. Guys can just touch gloves and come out when I get the back. Okay, so what I <laughs> want to say is that we have, um, I think you have to really have to have a love for photography to, to, to pick it up. Because I, I looked at the, what's it, Forbes rate rankings of, you know, highest paying jobs to lowest. And highest, of course, was uh, computer engineering and such. And uh, the bottom was uh, fine arts. <laughs> so why would somebody pick Fine art photography, of all things, as a career. And I, for me, it's, you, you got to have the love for it. it. It doesn't make any sense. You're probably, for the, for the percentage-wise, I mean, some people do make a bank of money. Other folks don't. But I'm saying it's all about the love. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Nelson, who is one of the top photographers in New York City. Wow. I'm, I'll stand on it. And here it is. <laughs> And uh, take it away, Ken. Why on earth would you want to be a photographer? Because my mama said so. Got <laughs> to listen to mama. Um, no. Well, again, my history is that I was born into photography uh, as a 12-year-old, and I was introduced to the dark room. So, uh, to some That's degree... That's ominous. I was introduced to the dark room. I, I, yeah, I was. You know, I was taught how to, how to print uh, in the dark room before I even was taught how to... F- take a photograph so you know that was interesting and i that's what it is and i think at that young age um it becomes your destiny uh when people ask me why i I really some degree can't answer that because it's been in my blood since even before i became a teenager uh and then things of when you begin to experience the craft of photography you begin to uh, experience what it can do for you and what it can do for your visions on the world. And so in this particular image, I mean, this image was taken way after I turned 13, um, but it sort of crystallizes my my joy of photography, and what it can do uh, in the world uh, and just take you back to a place in time and make you reminisce about what was going on at that time. So the history of photography is what keeps me doing photography and the ability for you to reflect on historical things that happened in your life by using photographs. That's what keeps me there. Huh. Um, and so and this is uh, an image from my own neighborhood, Red Hook, Greg, you'll, you know, this is the Grain Terminal. Grain Terminal, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I had gone there a couple of times. Right? And so this was the this was the playground. Uh, and so, you know, when you think of this as the playground, you really don't want to, as an adult, you don't want to be there playing in the playground. So I think I opted for the better of the two, which is to uh, parlay this into a photographic experience and not use it as the experience itself for me without the camera. OK, and so I have a question for you. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, my question is, in this photograph, uh, I get that you're much older, but you used to play there when you were younger about these kids' age. Yes. And I, I noticed that you took a photograph of them all sort of standing together. What does this assemblage uh, symbolize for you in that experience that you had as a kid? Well, I would, well, actually, what's interesting, because when we were, when I was growing up, and the friends that I had, we made clubhouses together. And we would go into abandoned buildings and create our own world within the clubhouse. And to me, this crystallizes that, that gang of people, that gang of friends that you had in the clubhouse. And this grain terminal basically was theirs. Uh, so that's where I get that connection from for this. And it, for me, it's an emotional, a very visceral thing. Uh, I'll go to this next one. 
and this one taken maybe a year after that one. But the technique of just color photography just intrigued me. And, you know, it's just everything, I, every photograph I take, every day that I think about photography keeps me doing photography because it is what it is and it is what it means to me. That's about the best explanation I can give you. <laughs> it's personal. It's personal. It's personal. Yeah. Part document. I love this shot. I love both of those shots, actually. The way yeah, I think they're really great. And, and, they and capture kids being kids. There's a, there's a diverseness to the uh, photographs that is really pretty good. Yep. Yep. And that's all I got to say about that. And you said it very well. Thanks, Ben. Thank you so much. Um, go ahead, Mark. Why on earth would you want to be a photographer? Well, you guys know that the big thing for me was to be a Sears catalog <laughs> photographer when I was going to get the wish book, right? Sears, they, would say, they would say pick, they would pick, they pick two things. But I used to love Hot Wheels cars as a really little kid, also. And I also remember when I was a little kid, for some reason, my parents took me to the movies with them. Probably they, I don't know if they couldn't afford a babysitter or they just didn't want to pay a babysitter or my grandmother wasn't available at the time. But one of the movies I remember seeing, and I feel like we saw it in the drive-in movie, I got to ask my brother uh, if he did or not, it was called Vanishing Point. And I have this visceral, it's your favorite word, right? right? This visceral uh, feeling mm -hmm. about the movie because I, what I remember from that age, I don't remember anything about the movie when I, when I, I mean, I'd seen it later as an adult, but I don't remember anything about the movie from my childhood except the, the, the tires, you know, going off the road and into gravel. You know, there was something about 70s movies and gravel that always symbolized like there was a murder or a sheriff getting out of a car or something. It was like they were like contemporary Westerns of their time. Right. And I know the imagery that of, of car chases that really began propagating in the 70s on television. And that kind of started in the 60s, but probably culminated with people saying bullet, but also this movie. Uh, really, really symbolize that. And that kind of imagery I found not in the beginning of my photographic career, but a little bit later uh, really meant something. I mean, one of the first subjects I photographed uh, was the auto show. You know, I went and would take photographs, but I found myself, you know, getting low to the ground to get low angles like this. Now, this is still from that movie, uh, the, the Vanishing Point. It, I, I, it's a screen capture. Uh, it, it's probably all over the web. I Googled it. And I think this one's currently on a place called Letterboxd. And I, you know, this is just for educational purposes. I'm not getting anything out of this, but I just figured we would use this as an example. And as you can see today, just like a couple of episodes ago or many episodes ago, we talked about the Bronco uh, ad, you know, the idea of a car racing around really still to me uh, it's something I like. And so between this and the kids playing with the Hot Wheels cars uh, and the Sears catalog, that's where I wanted to be a photographer. Now, why I stayed with it? Well, uh, it was really exciting and interesting. And I thought that, you know, by going to school and getting an education, that I would be able to go into the marketplace and use my skills to earn. You know, I, I did okay for a while, did a lot of doctoring work. And I won't go through the whole resume, but, you know, uh, the technology changes. And so there was a little bit of a dip. But then there was a, a you know, a, 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 boom, a boom again. And uh, because of COVID, there's another bit. But you'll see how things go in the future. But I stuck with it because I really liked it. And uh, it was much cheaper uh, in terms of doing that than it was going into film at the time. And I was very conscious of the cost of my entire college education with my parents helping me. And, you know, film stock was 70 grand. There was no way I was going to do that for a movie. So, but... Photography is a mature uh, medium. There's a development place on every corner or every couple of corners in Manhattan, you know, whether it was a Kelly photo lab or a professional lab or a modern age or something like that. So it seemed, and newspapers were all over the place, magazine stands. So it seemed like a, a safer way to get into that kind of imagery without incurring a tremendous amount of cost. And what I perceived to be uh, something that was, in, you know, much less attainable for me as a black person, because you didn't really see any black directors or photographers pre-internet. You don't see a lot. I mean, 
didn't see a lot now. Every black person who directs a movie or gets a writing contract, you hear about it and it's great and very happy. But back then, you guys know this, in the 70s, 70s and 80s, you, you just didn't really hear about anybody doing that. You did hear about a few photographers. So that's really it. Hmm. Michel, Michelou, he's like the black uh, Cecil B. DeMille of the 30s and 40s. Right, but, but you know, you, you'd hear about him, but, you know, how would you see his movies unless you found her? Um, right. You, you know what I mean? It, it, there really wasn't, yeah, and any black people working in television, you didn't really know who they were. You just, they existed. But, you know, it's not like today. Today, there's a whole bunch of ways to find out who's doing it. That, that, that uh, film brought you into photography. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And if I were wise, I would have gone into television back then. I'd probably do very well now. But who knew? There were only five channels in New York at the time. I had no idea there'd be hundreds of channels. And they'd be so It's just hmm? pictures. It's moving pictures. It's filming. Right. Drama. But we, I, I, I don't think any of us knew that it would grow. Maybe you did because you were in movies. But I mean, I don't think any of us who were outside of the business understood the potential growth that was there. Right. I understand. Well... Uh, anything else, or are you going to wrap it there? Yeah, well, yeah, we're going to wrap it there. I mean, that's what you go to school for, right? To find out where the growth is in your industry. That's, that's interesting, too, that you, you wanted to be a, a Sears catalog photographer, but you were, like, right there. You were Macy's catalog photographer. I think that no, it was, it was A&S, and then we did you know, a few things for Macy's, and then that uh, changed, too, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay, all right. That's another episode. All right, moving right along. Why on earth would you want to be a photographer? Yeah, okay. It, it definitely wasn't for the money. There was love, love, love. And uh, I got into photography because I, I saw the way the camera changed people. You know, you could, you could, uh, you know, this isn't the best example, but I noticed, you know, people, I was kind of the quiet guy in the room, the, the ones you got to watch out for and uh, <laughs> lock up your doors. No, uh, you, you, you see certain, so, certain social interactions. And um, when people would basically ignore you, but when you had the camera, they were all, hey, you know, hey, you know, get me, get me, you know. And I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. But um, what, 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 uh, you know, I, I, I started in engineering. I could have been uh, in electrical engineering, which I think would have been great because I like, you know, engineering. I love uh, mechanical engineering. I love making things move with uh, all of that. And I was pretty good at math and all of that. So I had the precursors for that, but then when I started doing media, and I saw how uh, art impacted people, you know, and how it could be a, a movement, you know, to change minds and to reinforce, you know, or just to, you know, share emotions and such, I, I liked the medium itself. Um, like this one, There's this is uh, up by uh, Prospect Park. Now, I went up there, there was a shot that I had in was destroyed uh there's this tree by the lake and it in the winter it, it drops these golden petals and it has it's just like to me it's like a perfect example of like a fall in new york you know golden and all the tree colors and all of that but i went up there and there was a it was foggy and everything and there was this driftwood in the lake and i was like you know that's one of the reasons why i like the target because like, like Kenny was saying, the documentary quality of it, where, where he captured the kids just being kids, and you know they look like they're up to no good. <laughs> but they're kids. Um, it's like this. It's like it doesn't care that it has a reflection, but it's beautiful. You know, it, it had that uh, Japanese uh, wabi-sabi to it. You know, it, it's not pretty, but it's not ugly. But it is kind of ugly, but that's what makes it pretty. And uh, I like that... Um, documentary power that photography has where you can just capture something and it's that's what you saw you know and uh one reason i don't like naming my photographs or putting a title to it is because this means something to everybody that sees it whether they're like oh that's crap what the hell is that or oh my gosh look at that it's you know it does something for me so that's one thing i like about photography the other thing I like about guitar is the completely unexpected. This is unexpected, but, you know, <laughs> you can flip the next shot, please. Um, totally unexpected. I'm like, uh, 
driving down Sepulveda in uh, in Los Angeles, and next thing I know, there's this big, big freaking 747, like 300 feet off the ground over my head. You know, okay, 500. But, you know, it's like, uh, wait a minute. Hey, Greg, it's not a 747, it's an Airbus. <laughs> okay, no, I'm not saying this one is. I'm just saying oh, okay. in general. But thank you for the clarification. <laughs> I did I did wait for a uh, a large plane to fly over, big four, yeah. four blaster. And yes, thank you, Airbus, yeah. But it was a, just a big plane. That's what I'm It saying. is a big plane. Big plane, and it's just like, you know, six, 700 feet off the ground. It changes your whole perspective, and it's... Um, Unexpected. I've always liked juxtaposing, uh, you know, soft with hard things that, that don't you don't normally see together, and um, that's that's uh, part of the power of the art of photography, where um, it it go, goes from beyond just uh, color or uh, lights or whatever, and it and you start putting ideas, visual ideas together, which is. Uh, which is one reason why I like photography and the arts, you know, it feels to be electronics, but go ahead, Ken. What? Well, I, I, I was going to say, go ahead, Ken. No, 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 I didn't say anything. Oh, oh I was going to say, I, I really love that the first photograph, the driftwood, because that's very, very photographic, and as opposed to cinematic, and it looks like a photograph that was taken before the smartphone and everyone had you know, 24 hour access to video capability uh, because it looks very much about a moment in time that even a drop of a rock could change. You know what I mean? Right, absolutely. I tried so, to. <laughs> like it just a, it's a stone's throw away from being a video. You, may, you throw a stone in, it, it, it ripples the water. It's a completely different scene. Right. So this I think is a, is a photograph as well as the as much as the other one is a photograph but it's very cinematic in nature probably because it's color number one number two we've all seen clips of airplanes taking off and landing but i have a question for you sure um this photograph it's sepulveda boulevard i guess that's los angeles and sepulveda is a spanish surname is, is this uh is this a photograph that plays well would play well outside of uh, Southern California? Um, or is it one that, because for me, this could be a photograph in Latin America as opposed to one that is in the United States. Because I know you're trying to juxtapose the English and the Spanish because the stop sign and the, you know, you're, you're juxtaposing cultures, right? If that's what you see, what what is your intention? I mean, with this photograph, or is it just, um, hey man, there's a plane above a billboard? I I like the multicultural aspect of it. Yes, uh, I wasn't trying to force that um, that uh, perspective, but I, I was just gonna say capture it. I mean, is that something that because you know I like that that concept of you know, juxtaposing the the, the the cultures together. And then quite honestly, you've got a wall there, which is very much part of the current political news landscape, you know? And then you've got an airplane, which is obviously, you know, oh, we associate, shouldn't say obviously, but we associate with people. So you've got people flying over a wall with a billboard in Spanish. And on our, our side, we've got uh, the English words stop. So this can be a very charged political photo if placed with the right copy. Not saying you should, but I'm just saying it is. And I was just wondering, were you just sort of capturing the scene or were you sort of crafting a photo simultaneously? And that's why I don't title photographs. Because yeah, all of that's there. I'm sure that my my id may have may have may have seen that that my conscious may not have. But definitely the framing, is, you know, it changed the whole, all of that, the, the meaning visually of it. Um, and the, the, <laughs> the silliness of, uh, you know, building a wall and figuring that can keep people away when planes fly. You know, you can, you can find a way around the wall. 
And uh, if you look at the Capitol riots, they climbed the Congress walls. They, they the building was uh, no, no uh, obstacle for them. But anyway, yeah, that's 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 an interesting concept. I, I appreciate your input. Um, I'm sure it played into it. I mean, the political aspect of it. And um, you know, people power. You know, I mean, look, look at the, the wing. <laughs> The, I think it was the beginning of the turn of this century. The uh, aircraft wing won like a, a high honor for being, you know, uh, one of the greatest inventions of all time. You know. So, wow. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I, I think I think it's a I think it's a really cool photo, uh, even if it's. Yeah, it's, it's good. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Okay, I'm just I'll just put my two cents in really quick. Uh, uh, as opposed to what Mark was thinking when he looks at this, I just think of uh, I'm just thinking pure graphics and I'm just thinking just pure graphically and I, I the 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 changing of the uh, tonalities of bloom are very apparent where you know as the height rises, the blue gets lighter. Yeah. As the height lowers, it gets darker. So the so Pulvidia sign is really royal blue, where this, uh, wow. the sign is sort of mid-tone blue, and then the sky gets really that sky blue. And I, and I think, you know, and for me, it adds a sense of lightness to it, so it adds to the lightness of flying a plane, even though we know that a plane is um, hundreds of tons. I think hundreds of tons, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah so, Right. So and I think even there's even the typeface on the plane may even be blue. Uh, I think that's Air France. Right. So um, looks like to be Air France. So, you know, there's a play on the blue color and it pops against the red. So I'm just thinking pure graphics. And when I think of Sepulveda uh, Boulevard and I think of Felice, oh my God, you know, uh, when you think of Christmas time in, Flo in California, you know, you think of palm trees where everybody else thinks of uh, evergreens. So, you know, it's kind of a different story for me. Okay, cool. Yeah, yep. yeah thank you for that. And see, yep. that's, there's, there's no telling what an image will evoke, you know? Yep. Yep. And uh, there's a lot going on in this picture. Yep. <laughs> you know, I, I yep. wanted the street sign. I, I waited and waited for a big plane to come through. And um, I have another one, actually, from this spot that says... Yeah. Hey, Greg, we're running long on time. Okay. All right. Well, we can wrap it there. I'll show that that other interesting image another time. But there is a reason everybody take a picture and say keep on shooting, get to know your uh, medium, and uh, which we're going to wrap it up here. Anything else, guys? No. Hey, no. I, I think. I think. Yeah. Nice picks. What's that? Nice picks. Nice picks. Okay. Good. Um, Oh, okay. so, yeah, we're going to wrap it. We're, uh, we are the three black fat grads coming to you live from Cancun, Mexico. Cheers. And uh, you guys are in Brooklyn, and that's a cool place to be. <laughs> so um, I'm Greg Clayquin. That's Mark Skinner. That's Kenny Nelson. And uh, please subscribe and uh, send, up, send us some comments. Uh, we love photography. We love talking about photography. Uh, we'd love to see some of your work. You know, let's, uh, have, let's have a parlay. Um, that, that'll do it for us. I'm Greg Clayquin. I'll see you next time. Cheers.